All right. So let us start. <clears throat> So the focus today is homeopathic strategies in musculoskeletal disorders and autoimmune diseases. But today's talk, which is a more of a talk focused on the overall approach. And this is a very interesting map that we have created is the homeopathic approach in complex cases, especially in cases of arthritis, in autoimmune disorders. Of course, the first focus in every case, as Master Hanneman always says, in the 153rd aphorism is individualization. Will have to be individualization. Any case, of whatever pathology, the first focus is to individualize. This is the cornerstone of homeopathy. And this is above everything else. The 153rd aphorism. However, in today's times, Many cases that we are seeing are blocked. Are cases where we are giving the remedy, but the patient is not improving. It could be due to the lifestyles. It could be due to the vaccinations. It could be due to the allopathic medicines. It could be due to the pollutions in and around us. It could be due to so many different, different things. So, in many such cases, blocked cases, you may have to open the block. And the way to open the block could often be with the help of a nozzle or a sarco. or a bobble nosehole or sometimes as Master Hanneman found out 12 years after his homeopathic practice, anti-miasmatic or in some cases, tautopathic remedy. Tautopathy meaning when a patient is taking a particular allopathic medicines and is affecting his health. You may actually take that allopathic medicine and potentize it and give it to the patient to remove the layer of toxicity. So this is broadly the different approaches that I often use when a case is blocked. But what I'm going to try to do for you is, is share with you in cases of arthritis how to understand all the classical miasms the first miasm that we'll talk about is the soric miasm Sora, as you know, Master Hanneman spoke about it as the itch, isn't it? But how would the arthritis patient express this soric patterns? Generally in soric miasm, it's an inflammatory kind of rheumatism. And what I have seen is that patients belonging to soric miasm, they have many sensations because the 
symptoms are at functional level. So they describe the pains in a lot of different ways. So a lot of description of different sensations of the pain typically could also note towards soric miasma. And of course, it's a more superficial and inflammatory kind of rheumatism, arthritis. Most of these soric symptoms are aggravated by rest. And generally worse on sunrise, on cold, And most of the symptoms are better after natural discharges. Like very often you will see patients telling you that I feel better after diarrhea or I feel better after menses or I feel better after this skin symptoms come up. So when this natural, when the body is able to naturally remove any kind of discharges and patient feels better, this is a very important soric trait. The word is trait, a soric trait. So this is just a little brief about the soric patterns in arthritis. Of course, and you know that we are going to have a course starting from January on homeopathy in autoimmune diseases and musculoskeletal disorders. And we are going to talk so much in detail about everything. Today is just a, a kind of a brief idea about what we are planning. And what we have to go much more in depth in future. The next miasm is the psychosis. Psychosis or psychotic miasm, typically the growth, the tumors, the exuberance, the discharges. Qatar. Qatar is a very important pattern of psychotic miasm. We know its basis in gonorrhea, understandably. <clears throat> what are the main patterns? Especially with rheumatism, there will be a lot of numbness and paralysis. Would often have very typical, a lot of puffiness and dropsy and swelling. Swelling and puffiness is a keynote of psychosis. If you read Medorinum from Allen's keynote, you will see this. The puffiness, the swelling and stiffness of joints is the keynote. Wandering pains, one day here, one day there, one day here. This is very typical psychotic miasm pattern. Connective tissue is often affected. This is also very, very important. And that's why many collagen vascular disorders could often have its layer to psychotic mass. They also have the symptoms of easy spraining. The joint gets sprained very easily. <clears throat> Most psychotic miasm patterns, all symptoms are aggravated in rain, in damp. Typical hydrogenoid constitution. Very often, they have allergies. They have meat aggravation. For example, natrum sulfuricum. If they eat fruits, if they eat vegetables, they get a lot of problems with asthma, with joint issues. 
hydrogenoid concentration. Always psychosis is better by unnatural discharges like leucorium, leucoria amelorate. One of the remedies is murex, a psychotic remedy. Better by slow movement. I feel better by walking slowly. Pulsatilla. Psychotic miasm. So, of course, there are so many more things. I'm just giving you a brief about these things. Okay. Just orienting you towards structured way of thinking. Next miasm. Of course, the syphilitic miasm. You know, it's everything about destructions, ulcers, gangrene. The long bones and the spine is more affected. Atrophy and emaciation. Very often, I give a lot of importance to family history and personal history. In the past, the person in syphilitic miasm has had syphilitic pattern of diseases. And even in the family, you will see someone in the family having paralysis or sudden heart attack. This is very typical syphilitic miasm. Could also be history of a lot of alcoholism in the family. Most symptoms of syphilitic miasm are aggravated at night. Interestingly, now when I'm talking about syphilitic miasm, you can easily kind of visualize our case and you can see some patterns of this miasm in the background, isn't it? The night aggravation. The deep bone disorders destructions of bone advanced arthritis rheumatoid arthritis ovascular necrosis and the main thing about syphilitic miasm kent writes is the mind is affected in such a way that the most pure thing about life is the love of one's life. And in syphilitic miasm, one's own love towards their own life is affected. And that is the basis of the very deep syphilitic miasm, Kent writes. This will to live, this desire about one's own self, this is gone. This is very often very, very deep underlying syphilitic miasm when you see these things. Often, syphilitic miasm, better by discharges, but pus, better by pus coming out, better by bleeding coming out. For example, lachesis, you know, has a symptom. Abscess, better by pus coming out. This is lachesis. So oh, interesting, my God. And one more miasm that we will talk about is, of course, is the tubercular miasm. This was the later miasm that was added by Allen. What is the main thing about tubercular miasm? Lack of strength of bones. The main thing about tubercular miasm is loss of weight, emaciation, changeability, change desire for, and recurrent patterns, recurrent joint pains, recurrent tonsillitis. Recurrent pneumonia. When you see something recurrent, it's tubercular miasm.
when there is an effusion of fluid accumulation in the joints, this is tubercular myosin. When, for example, a child, the developmental delay is there, could often be tubercular myosin. Always symptoms of tubercular myosin aggravated during thunderstorms. Remember phosphorus and better by open air. 